Hi, welcome to the Rittner Floral School in Boston, Mass. I'm Dr. Steve Rittner, and it's a pleasure to welcome you into one of our classrooms today. The time of the year is fall, and we're going to do a neat fall design, and I want to show you guys a little trick. There's a trick that we can do to come up with a very, very interesting fall piece uh, in a slightly different look that you might not have expected. I think you're going to really enjoy it. Now, with all of our designs, we start with a container. We want to make our lives easy. We've got a lovely container here. It's got kind of a purple sheen and kind of an opalescent kind of feel to it. We've got foam in place and we're ready to go. And we're going to use an interesting combination of things on this design today, and I think you're going to find this to be kind of cool. We're going to start off with one of my favorite flowers. It is a flower that is available pretty much through the year, not just fall, but it is definitely available around this time of the year, and that is our orchid, our dendrobium orchid. Dendrobiums come in a wide variety of colors. We get them in lavenders, we can get them in pinks, we can get them in whites, we can get them in, uh, in slightly bicolors with blushes and white. Uh, they're a very, very neat flower. And the neat thing about this flower, besides the fact that it's readily available, is that because of the length of the stems and the way the flowers kind of fall, it, it feels very, very informal. And that is a good thing from our point of view because it means that we can take these things, work them into our designs, and play with them, and use this almost as an outline, as it were, to come up with really a cool effect. In other words, uh, sometimes we'll do this kind of an effect using some of our foliages, but we can also do it with a flower like our dendrobium. So notice I'm just taking it, working my flower, gradually coming around. I'm working on the left side of the design using my dendrobes, and I'm letting them hang. I'm starting up here, gradually working down, and letting them go in, in almost like different directions. So I've kind of worked around on this side of the design. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side of the design. This one I think you're going to really find easy to do, and the materials are going to make it work very, very nicely. Uh, I'm going to, again, take another piece of my dendrobium. I'm cutting it in place, and I'm going to place it over here, over towards the right side. And then I'm going to take another piece of my dendrobe and work it over onto this side as well, just gradually working down in terms of my placement. So I'm really working the, the two sides of my design more than anything else on this one. And I'm going to take another flower and then gradually work it down here. This is going to be a one-sided piece. We could do something like this to be viewed all the way around, but we're going to just concentrate on one side. And by doing that, we're going to have something that is, I think, going to be pretty darn neat looking by the time we get through. Now, we're going to mix our dendrobiums with other materials. The mixture of flowers together gives different texture to our design. It gives contrast in shapes. In other words, we can come up with some really good things by doing that. And the next flower that we're going to use is also going to be in our violet range, which happens to be our stalk, our stalk. And we're going to take it, it's violet, but it's slightly different in color, coloration to our uh, dendrobiums because, as you know, even within one color range you can have some variations. So I'm taking a little of my stalk and I'm working it in. Notice that the feel of the, uh, of the uh, stalk is a little bit different. It's thicker. It gives more body. It doesn't feel quite as ethereal as the dendrobes do. Um, and it seems to be bulking up our design a bit, and that's exactly the intention that we are trying to achieve. So I'm going to take a little bit more of my stock, gradually work it around. So I have a piece here, 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 here. I think I will probably put another one in a little closer. But before I do that, I want to play with another tool, another kind of botanical that we have not played with uh, up till now in this design. And the choice that we're going to pick may seem a little bit strange to you. What we're going to do is take a product called pumpkin tree. Pumpkin tree, that's what it's called. Is this cool or what? They look like tiny little pumpkins growing on sticks. I think that that is pretty neat. But I did say it is the fall time of the year. And because it is the fall time of the year, I want to work some of this stuff into my design. And by doing it, we're going to come up with a very, very interesting contrast. So you'll notice that I'm playing with some of my pumpkin tree. 
I mean, we like playing with full-size pumpkins. We sometimes like sticking little pumpkins into an arrangement. But when we start playing with something like this, it gives a totally different look to our designing. And that's the whole idea. So I'm taking some of my pumpkin tree and I'm going to work it in, which gives us a very, very strong contrast both in terms of shapes as well as color in our design. Now at this point, I'm going to sneak one more piece of my stock in here just to kind of bulk up just a little bit more right in here. And now let's take a few other things. We can play. We're gradually working from the edges working in. And there's all kinds of things that we can play with. Uh, one of my favorite flowers that we happen to have to play with today, and it's definitely available around this time of the year, is, of course, our dahlias. Of course, dahlias come available at this time of the year in a wide range of colors, pinks, whites, oranges, uh, purples. Uh, and we're going to play a little bit with some of these in our design. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by taking a dahlia and I'm going to place it right here. So in other words, we're gradually working in from the extremities gradually into the design. And I'm going to place another dahlia right over here. So we've got a couple of dahlias worked in. And then I'm going to shift gears a little bit. And I'm going to continue my process of filling in in towards the center. And to do that, I'm going to take another one of our favorite flowers, which everybody loves. Whenever you're looking for a flower that's universally beloved, this one works very, very well, hydrangea. And so what I'm going to do is take a hydrangea, and I'm going to mix it with my dahlias in towards the front of the design. So notice how that that's giving me a little bit of contrast in our arrangement. So we have some very, very interesting things going on here. We're gradually working from the extremities, gradually coming in towards the center of our design. We still have a little more space to play with in towards the center. And I'm going to work some things into it. I'm going to work another dahlia in. And let's work that guy right here. So we'll fit another dahlia right in here. And then to give us some contrast, I'd like to uh, show you a flower again, one of my favorite flowers that is a very, very neat flower. It's available throughout the year, but we love them. And that is, of course, our Alstroemeria. And I happen to have some Alstroemeria here that actually has a, a light green kind of tinge to it. And so I am going to work some of my Alstroemeria in right here. So I've got not only do I have my green of my, uh, of my hydrangea, but I also have a green of my Alstroemeria placed there, too. Notice how this is giving us kind of a wild look to our design. It doesn't feel rigid. It feels like it's flowing. And that's the whole idea. Let's add another one of our Alstroemeria in here as well. So we have another little touch there. And now I'm going to add another one of my favorite flowers into this. And this is, of course, a very, very cool flower. And that is our Gerbera. This is a miniature Gerbera. It's just a little bit smaller. Notice that we're playing with the fall motif in terms of the orange. And I do want to mix a few of my mini Gerberas in. And so I'm going to take one right here. I'm going to place another one over here. In other words, I'm just working them just gradually through. As I'm working them in, I am holding them fairly close to the base as I'm placing them because by doing it that way, I won't have the base fold or crumple. In other words, I'm taking it. If you want to get a, a very, very easy insertion, hold it closer to the base as you poke it in, and then you'll find it'll insert very, very nicely for you. Notice this design feels almost unarranged. It has that kind of wild, unarranged kind of look. People like this kind of look. There are ways that we can come up with designing that's more formalized. And there's also ways that we can come up with designing that feels a little bit less formal and a little more unarranged and wild. And that style, a lot of people love it. And that's why I've gotten notes from some of you guys and emails from you guys telling me that you really like that kind of look. So that's why I'm trying to give you that look here. It almost feels like a still life, doesn't it? It, it almost feels like one of these paintings that you'd see at the museum. Isn't that pretty? Doesn't it give an interesting effect? Now, I've got one more thing that I'd like to play with. We love our, our hydrangea. We love our dahlias, our orchids, our stock. 
But there is a flower, of course, that's universally beloved, and that is the rose. And we have so many different varieties. And I just happened to come across this variety that is a purple, but it's got gradations from light to dark on this one. Uh, we almost call it a bicolor, but it's really a, a pretty darn cool variation on purple. And so I thought it might be kind of fun to work some of these into our mix, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So we'll add some of our roses. You never can go wrong, my viewer, if you add some roses to a design. And notice, as I'm placing these into, whoops, I dropped my clippers. As I'm placing these into my arrangement, I'm, I'm facing them in slightly different directions. In other words, this one's going off here on this side. And then I'm going to place another one of my roses up over here, kind of facing out over here. And then let's take another one of my roses and work it slightly over here, over on this side. In other words, I'm gradually working them in so that they're not all angled towards the exact same spot. By doing that that way, we end up with a far more interesting composition. It looks like some of them are angled forward, some of them are backwards. Uh, one to the side. In other words, just kind of working them in a little bit here and there into our design to kind of work here, here, over here, giving us a really, really interesting look. Now, we always, a general rule of thumb on any of our designing is that we always cover our mechanics, and this is no exception. Whenever we do a design, we want to make sure by covering the mechanics, we mean we don't want to have obvious pieces of foam showing there. And so I'm going to take uh, a favorite substance of ours. Here at Rittner's Floral School, we call it Stephen Hare. Uh, but the technical name is, of course, Spanish Moss. And I'm just going to tuck a little bit of our Spanish Moss in here so that if there is a spot uh, that is showing, we can make sure that we cover it. I'm going to use some number 20 wire. It's a heavy wire made into a U-shape just to hold it in place so that in that way I'm not going to have any problems in terms of this stuff coming out. And I'm going to tuck a little here and there into our design. Sometimes when we're doing these kinds of things, we also like to take a little bit and then just kind of wrap it around a stem or two. You may like this effect, you may not. I think it's a taste that some people like, some don't, but I think it gives kind of an interesting effect. And of course, we would take a little bit more of this and work some of this onto the other side. If this is going to be presented as a one-sided piece, we would just take a little bit more of our moss and place it around the back side of it to make sure that all of our mechanics are covered. So what do you think, my viewer? It's an interesting composition here. It feels unarranged. It's a fall design, very obviously, because we've got pumpkins and orange in here. But it's not what we would call a typical kind of fall design. I mean, typically in a fall, you would think yellows, red oranges, oranges, orange yellows, things like that. On this design here, you notice we're playing primarily with purple and green and orange, which is not what you would normally consider to be your typical fall palette. But it works. And there's one reason that it does work very nicely is that we're kind of playing with color theory here. When we have a, a violet, an orange, and a green, those are a triadic color harmony. They're equidistant on the color wheel. So by playing with violet, orange, and green here, and working them together, it gives a very, very interesting effect. And the orange works opposite the violet. It gives a very, very nice contrast. And the green that we're using is a light green. So we're getting contrast and value in terms of lights and darks, plus this triadic color harmony thing working. It gives a really, really cool effect. So what do you think, my viewer? It's a cool trick, isn't it? Quick, easy, and fun. At Rittner's Floral School in Boston, we believe that learning floral designing can be quick, easy, and fun. And we show you tricks, floral art tricks, they will enable you to come up with some really cool results, but without working excessively hard. I hope that you've enjoyed this brief presentation. Go out and get some of these things. Get some of your purple dahlias and roses and dendrobiums. Try to get some of your orange materials. Um, and if you can find some little pumpkins to work in, or Gerbera, that's great. And mix it with some green things like hydrangea and 
green alstro or any other green type things and see what you can come up with. Again, we want to thank you for coming in and visiting with us today. On behalf of all of us, I'm Dr. Steve Rittner. We hope that you've enjoyed this brief demonstration. Thank you.